This helmet is awfully heavy for LARP. And you probably can't hear anything I'm saying uh, because, of course, I'm wearing a steel helmet. So let me take this off. Uh, as I was saying, this helmet is awfully heavy for LARP, and you can't hear anything I'm saying because I got a big piece of steel in front of my face. So uh, I think I need to make something out of foam. <laughs> Masks and helmets. Most people who make masks and helmets go out and either get themselves a life cast or they make one at home. I don't have the materials to make a life cast and honestly I'm a little bit too lazy and a little bit terrified of going to that length of effort to cast my head in plaster. What some people have done is they've tried using things like wig molds, but of course wig molds are much smaller than the average human head. I think this one measures out at about 20 inches, whereas my head's closer to 24 inches. I've also seen people take wig molds and add uh, aluminum foil to get it up to the right dimensions and the right shape. But it's never quite been right. Uh, a real helmet maker will take a variety of measurements and be able to make it just right off the measurements for your head like this one was. Fits great. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do a life cast uh, the red green way. Duct tape and expanding foam. Let's do it. Okay, so the things that we're going to need for this is we're going to need some plastic food wrap or some cellophane uh, wrap. Uh, I don't want the tape to stick to my skin or to my hair, so I need to protect myself with that. A couple of rolls of duct tape. Uh, it doesn't really matter the color. Basically, we're just using that to create the outer form of the head mold. And we're going to need some expanding foam. You can pretty much use any gap filler foam. Uh, it doesn't have to be great stuff. It can be any of the ones you get at your local hardware store. And uh, you're basically going to wrap yourself or have a friend wrap you from the shoulders up so you got a nice base maybe put some weight in there and some support in the neck and uh, once you got the duct tape all on there cut it off we're going to fill it up with foam and see how this works what about a straw to breathe through well we're just going to leave a gap for my mouth okay i'll try to do that thanks kelsey So I survived Kelsey wrapping me in cellophane and duct tape and the battery died while we were recording. So what we have here is I've basically had my head completely duct taped. We cut it up the back very carefully up about three quarters of the way and then we just reseamed that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it upside down and uh, fill it up with expanding.
looks like we might be able to get this whole thing with one can of foam. Which is great, because then I have another one to do another size of head. Some of the expanding foams you can get expand more than others. Um, some have a low expansion, some have high. Definitely want to do this in a very vented, well vented area because the foam, I'm sure, is uh, not the best for you. things that I learned in doing this uh, it did take a lot uh, I used basically one full can of foam and uh, a couple of the problems I noticed what wasn't quite curing up like I wanted it to uh, a lot of areas kind of uh, you know were staying soft a lot longer so I took my razor blade and I opened up some uh, holes just to allow the oxygen to get to the product inside and uh, that helped quite a bit now we seem to have a couple of minor dents inside and then I've also got a cavern inside uh, that didn't get filled up. Fortunately the foam hardened up all the way around it so I don't need to fill any more. Okay, so what I learned what I would do differently. I would do the duct tape the same way. That worked very well. It didn't take very long and it wasn't too uncomfortable. But what I would do when I mounted it upside down is I would probably build a little bit more of a rigid frame around this part. Uh, with the rolls of tape underneath it caused a little bit of a dent which I had to fix. I had to shake that foam around in the inside to make sure it was all coated and good and, and firm. But I would probably fill it up bit by bit a little bit slower. Um, when I filled this up uh, with the foam I just basically started spraying and everything else and you know filled it up all the way. It took a long time to cure and I got those little gaps. So what I would do differently next time is I would fill it up probably halfway, let that cure some, and then fill it up, you know, the rest of the way. So, fairly easy to do. Took about uh, 45 minutes to do the main part of the process and then overnight to cure. So a couple of things that I did to give it a little bit more strength is I put a uh, piece of uh, uh, 1x4 cedar up through the neck while the foam was still wet. And while I was filling it in, that gives it a little bit more strength. I've broken wig molds before trying to work on uh, products on them and the neck just isn't stable enough. Um, it also gives me something that I can put it in my vise to hold it stable while I'm working on uh, building helmets or masks or whatever I need to do. So yeah, if you have any other suggestions or questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. See you guys. Thank you.